Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about handling errors. Now this video is not going to be handling any sort of model binding errors where the user passes incorrect data. That's going to be set apart for a little bit later on when we talk about razor views. Instead, this video is going to be talking more about things like runtime errors and 404 or 500 errors that you might need to pass back to the user in a graceful manner. I also should mention that I'm only going to be showing you one way of handling errors. There are actually several different ways that you can approach this, but I just kind of want to give you a pretty decent way of handling errors in a graceful manner that gives you some flexibility in the way that you code for them. Now to do this, we're actually going to need to add middleware to the startup class. And in the startup class, we should actually be checking first to see what is the environment that we're working in. Because if we're running it in a development environment, then maybe we want to see some great detail about what error is occurring. But if we're just a standard user in a production environment, we should be handling it much more gracefully. So for handling errors in development, we can actually use the use developer exception page uh, middleware in order for us to actually see some very great detail about what the error is. And this we want to specifically say would only run if the, in, the is development method returns true. So for our users, we're going to do this much more gracefully than just showing them all of the information about the error. Instead, we're going to use something like use exception handler for whenever there's some sort of internal error or a runtime error with our code. Now we're just going to basically spit out a generic 500 error code or a special page to our user that kind of uh, makes them realize that there's some sort of problem. But then there's also those cases where maybe the user is just simply going to the wrong location. And for that, we can use the use code pages with re-execute. I'm going to show you that we have a lot of flexibility with this use code pages with re-execution because we can actually pass the, code, the status code along with this method in order to be more specific about how we want to handle that to our user. So let's go ahead and hop into Visual Studio and let's get started. So here in my startup class, I'm going to go ahead and uncomment out this if statement where it says if env.isdevelopment. And this is a check to see whether or not we're in the development environment. And if we are, then we can use the developer exception page. Now this was added when we transitioned from our RC1 or RC2 edition uh, of our application over to the new RTM release. And we just built a brand new uh, MVC application out of the box. And it automatically put this code in here for us, but we commented it out when we did the transition. Now I'm going to uncomment it out because now you can understand what it's used for. Whenever there's some sort of problem, this use developer exception page will kick in and show very good detail about what the error is. Now if we just go ahead and save this, and I'm going to go ahead and just run our application as is. So we've got this customer's controller here, and I'm going to run the delete customer action but we've already taken out Mr. Uh, Mr. Tom Burke from our application. So this is going to generate an error. And because of that, we should hit this use developer exception page. So let's go ahead and run our application. And from here, let's go ahead and do customers delete customer. So we've hit our argument null exception because there is an error when we try to re-delete the customer. So let's go ahead and just hit continue and this will continue past. And what we got was a generic Edge Browser 500 error. This is not what we were looking to have happen. And for those of you who may have seen some of my earlier videos, you may recall that back here in our startup class, the order of our pipeline was very important. The order in which we run our middleware is very, very important. And the use MVC with default route if it's not able to handle a request, it will try to immediately respond back with that 500 error. And it actually doesn't move into this use developer exception page. We actually need to pipe this in before 
we use MVC with default routing. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and put it down here after we've checked to see if we're in the development environment and then use the developer exception page. So we're just changing the order of our middleware. And let's go ahead and run this again. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna do customers, delete customer. We hit our argument null exception error, which should then return back to our application that there's an error. And here we can see in the developer view what the problem was. So we can see argument null exception, value cannot be null. And it tells us basically some information about where that problem originated. It originated when we tried to do this remove command on our customer's controller. Now that's great and everything, but what about for our regular users? Since I am in a development environment and I'm going to be continuing to do that, I'm just gonna comment this out for right now. And we're just gonna work inside of our configure method and just assume that we are in a production environment with these errors. So just before our use MVC with default route, but after our is development check, I'm gonna go ahead and do app use exception handler. And the exception handler middleware allows us to actually pass in an error handling path as a string. So we can actually tell our application, there's a specific path I want you to go to whenever you encounter an error. So I'm gonna go ahead and do forward slash errors, and that will now redirect to our local host forward slash errors. Let me go ahead and finish that statement here by putting a semicolon there. And now we can go ahead and create a controller to handle our errors. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a new item MVC controller class, and this is going to be our errors controller. Now remember, the index action is the default action for our controller. So if we make this call to the forward slash errors, then our errors controller will go ahead and process that request on the index action. So with this index action, I'm gonna go ahead and go down to my views and I'm going to create a new folder here. And this folder is going to handle the errors uh, HTML that we want to do. So we'll do errors for our folder name. And then, oops, I didn't want to actually open that. We're going to do a right click on errors and we're going to add a new index page. So we'll do new. And actually, instead of uh, using index, I'm going to actually call this just error. So we'll do error. And we'll make this an HTML page. And we'll say, oops. And we're just gonna put in some code here for what we want to return back to the user. So we'll do something like this, h2. There appears to have been a problem handling your request. And do something like this rest assured the people responsible will be dealt with all right let's go ahead and save that so now if the user gets a 500 error or something that's an exception error they should be routed instead of uh, to that developer middleware that we had set up here Remember, we commented that out. So now we should actually be rerouted to this errors page. Uh, but I do need to go to my errors controller and make sure that my index action calls that specific error view that I created, not the index view. So we're calling this error page instead. Okay, so let's go ahead and save all that. Let's go ahead and run our application. Okay, so once again, we'll see if we can delete uh, Mr. Tom Burke, which we shouldn't be able to do, and we should get some sort of error. So we'll do delete customer. There we get our uh, argument null exception, which since we're in debug mode, it pauses on that location for us. But if we were to assume that we were just running this in production, we wouldn't be able to see this. So we're just going to continue on. And this would be the graceful error that our user would get. There appears to have been a problem handling your request. 
Rest assured the people responsible will be dealt with. Now that works great if there was some sort of coding error, but what happens if your user tries to go to a page that doesn't exist? So I'm just gonna type some random characters here and they get a 404 error. Now this page is actually something that by default, the Edge browser is kicking back up and each browser pretty much has their own way of handling these status codes. But let's say that I wanted to be very specific. I wanted to show the user something else for this 404 error. Let's go ahead and go back into our application. Let's stop what's going on here and go back to our startup class. So to handle these status errors, which are not runtime errors, they're actually just status codes, something that the user did to cause a problem basically for themselves in some way. So we're gonna do app use status code pages with execute, okay? And the use status code pages with execute allows us to actually pass in a path format, not just a path like we had with the exception handler, but an actual formatted string. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say errors, cause we're gonna hit the same errors controller that we were creating, but this time I'm actually gonna call the error method. I'm gonna create a new action on our errors controller called error. But I'm also allowed to pass in as a parameter what the error number is or what the status code is. So we're gonna do in, uh, in curly braces zero. And that zero in curly braces rec uh, is recognized as the status code number itself. So if it's a 404 error, then this would be 404. If this would be a 302 error, then that would show 302. And that number then can be handled in our error action. So let's go ahead and save that. And I'm gonna to go to my errors controller here and let's create a new public I action result error that takes a string and I'm gonna call this ID because that's the default name that the uh, parameter is always given when it's passed in. Remember that's by default, what we get with the use MVC with default route is that if we're passing in a parameter immediately after this forward slash that is assigned uh, the parameter name ID. So that's what I'm accepting here is that it's a string called ID, okay? Now you could do all sorts of things like check to see if, uh, you know, ID equals 404, then you could do something with this to handle it as a 404 code page error. Actually, it's not assigned 404, that should be equals 404, there we go. So then you could do a return of a view that would be the uh, error 404 page, right? Something like this. And if you wanted to continue to add to this, you could add uh, you know, two, uh, 302 errors or 300 errors, whatever the error codes are that you specifically wanna handle, you can go ahead and uh, set up your definitions here for them. Now, I'm just gonna comment this out because I'm not really gonna be trying to handle errors quite like that, but I am going to create a 404 page error that I'm just gonna show for all of my errors that might come to this location. Uh, it's entirely up to you how you wanna handle this. I just, for demonstration purposes, only felt like creating these two pages. So we're gonna do a new item MVC page and we're gonna call this error 404. And let's go ahead and do HTML. Wrong page, buddy. And now for the body, I'm just gonna do something like this. We'll do a H2. Looks like you've come to the wrong place. And I have an image here I'm gonna post up. So we'll do image src all right that's just what we're going to put up there let's go ahead and save this we'll go ahead and run our application and now we'll just go to some random place and hit enter and it looks like you come to the wrong place so that is now the 404 error that we're kicking back to the user 
when they are having a problem. And just to show you guys, there is still going to be the other 500 error if somebody tries to go to this delete customer and there's some sort of problem with this, you know, we got a runtime error essentially or an exception, then that's still going to be processed by our other page that we created here where there appears to have been a problem handling your request. So before I leave you, I'm gonna go ahead and fix up the startup class so that if we're in a development environment, we're going to handle exceptions one way, and if we're in production, we're gonna handle them in a different way. So to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and once again, uncomment out the if uh, environment is development, then we wanna use the exception, the developer exception page. And then I'm just gonna do an else, and then I'm gonna take the second or the closed curly brace, and I'm gonna put it after our uh, use exception handler and use status code pages with re-execute. We'll go ahead and just kind of indent this properly and save it. And now we're all set for both the development environment so that we get the, the full error message as we're developing, and then a more graceful solution if we're in production. So there you go, that's just one way that you can handle errors. There's a lot of different opinions about the best way to go about it. Uh, perhaps you may wanna consider just wrapping pretty much every one of your actions in some sort of um, try catch block. So rather than just directly trying to execute the code, you do a try catch block. And if there's some sort of error doing it, then maybe you know respond back with a very specific error page for each one of those errors. Uh, but generally, if you're just looking for a very generic way of handling errors, this is really probably one of the most efficient ways that you can do it while still providing flexibility here because you can handle those errors more specifically in this controller action and checking to see what the status code actually is and then returning a very special page based upon that particular error. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe to my channel. It helps to grow the channel, and I really appreciate it when you guys do. If you guys have any questions or comments or improvements to what I've done in this video, uh, if you have some other suggestions, please feel free to drop a line in the comments section below this video, and we sh we you know we'll have a great time talking about it. So thank you so much, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.